Hello and welcome to another episode of Now About That with James and Sarah. I'm James. And I'm Sarah. And that bitch is Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> and on today's episode, we don't really have a topic. We're just going to talk and chat and talk about some things that are going on. Unless Sarah has a topic that she didn't tell me about. Um, We can talk about how I randomly ended up down a rabbit hole earlier. A rabbit hole? Not a literal rabbit hole, but... Say, is the rabbit okay? um, What? I was going to say, is the rabbit okay? Yes. No, I think I saw you. The rabbit survived. I think I saw your your Facebook post about it because I've been looking on Facebook a couple times every now and then. Um, But anyways, yeah, go ahead. What happened? Why did you go down a rabbit hole, Sarah? Okay, so like the past few days, I've been having like this series of short stories kind of percolating in my head. Like they're all interconnected. They're all queer little romance sh- stories. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I finally decided to start like writing it down today because it's been running around in my head for like the last two weeks. Um, so I started writing it down and then I went to go look something up. I went to go and see whether or not stars had orbits. Cause I mean, I assumed that they did, but then I was just like, oh, I should, I should check. Yeah. And stars do have orbits centered around, um, it's called the Barry Center. And it's not the center of the, um, the bigger star or, you know, the planet or whatever. But it's the, let me make sure I'm explaining this right. Um, also, just for clarification, the sun is a star and we orbit around the sun. Right. So that could have been your answer, Sarah. Yes, but that's not entirely what I meant. Yeah. I meant do stars, like, have, do stars ever orbit? Because, like, I know we orbit around the sun, but, but that's, but that's interesting that you bring that up because, okay. So the very center is a dynamical point, not a physical, um, point. So it's the point around which the object is orbiting and the Barry Center is usually closest to the object with most mass. So we orbit the sun because of um, something different. (laughs) Jupiter is, I don't remember what it was that I looked up earlier, but Jupiter is an example of um, orbiting in a Barry Center. So like it orbits not the center of the sun, which I think is what how we do it, but um, the the um, closest point to the object with most mass, which we which would be the sun. So anyway, so I was looking at that, and then I was looking up um, like what the oldest flowers were. Like when did flowers start being a thing? And then I started looking into like when when did um pollinators like bees start being a thing and like what were the earliest bees and what were the earliest flowers and all those other stuff okay completely like (laughs) went completely off the rails all like these were all things that i was interested in but then of course then earlier i was thinking about this and i haven't looked it up yet but like how did we determine there's 60 minutes in an hour like how did we come up with the concept of an hour based on the sun yeah but i haven't looked it up yet so i don't yeah i don't know like the like i know that answer like the basic answer but like how did we determine the length of an hour so how did we i'm gonna look it up now because now i'm thinking about it and to those of you we lost i apologize sarah's having she's just I'm letting her go. She's just going to do her own thing today. <laughs> okay. So, according to nrichmaths.org. Um, completely hours, reliable source. Completely reliable <laughs> source. Hours did not have a fixed length until the Greeks decided they needed such a system for theoretical calculations. Hmm. Okay. So, Hipparchus, I think proposed dividing the day equally into 24 hours which came to be known as 
equinoctial hours. They're based on 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness on the days of the equinoxes. But that doesn't tell me, like, where did we come up with, like, the 60 minutes? So, like, how did we determine? Was that, mm -hmm. I guess, just based on the equinoctial hours when they were like, okay, so noon to noon is going to be 12 hours. Like, why is it 60 instead of 100? Yeah. Is it because it's a multiple? Like, a 60, a multiple, or 12, 12, a mul 12, 12 and 24, a multiple of 60? Has to be right. Right. Um... Also, there's a whole song about the number of minutes in a, a year. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, okay. So, there, cool. there are 12, they're called Hore, representing the 12 hours of the day in late antiqu antiquity by Nanus. So, back then, the hour, the 12 hours were divvied up as first light, sunrise, morning hour of music and study, morning hour of exercise, morning hour of ablutions, noon, libations poured after lunch, prayer, eating and pleasure, start of evening, sunset, and night sky. Okay, okay, no, now we're getting into the good part. The, so it looks like in the Middle Ages and when we is when we divided the hour into 60 minutes, each of which are 60 seconds. It says, this derives from Babylonian astronomy, where the corresponding terms denoted the time required for the sun's apparent motion through the ecliptic to describe one minute or second of arc, respectively. In present terms, the Babylonian degree of time was thus four minutes long, the minute of time was thus four seconds long, and the second one fifteenth of a second. Oof. It looks like they just did a lot of weird things and weird calculations and then decided this is how it was going to be. But basically, like everything else, they just decided. Pretty much. You know, like what words mean and why words are and how words are used. Things are just made. Things are just... Yes. They just and are I... established. Yes, things are established. And then people go with it. I, um... And, and speaking of, like words and whatnot i created a new word yesterday was it yesterday it was either yesterday or the day before anyway it's called the clear-headedest which means to be the most clear-headed so oh did you know who, did you see who else created a word this week or within the last couple of weeks i'm sure it's been in development for a while oh god who share did Love you see that. that share came out with gelato she's i did not I think I think it was that she rented or she's she bought a, a gelato truck. So now sure. there's share lotto. And I've been bugging Ryan about it all week. Being like, come on, Chaz, get in the truck. We got to go serve the share lotto. Oh, <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, my God. Uh, You know, I don't have to drive that goddamn thing, Chaz. Come on. Oh, my God. Churn back time. <laughs> yes. Ugh. I love it. Oh, God. If I could turn back time. Oh. Oh, but interesting fact about gelato that I just saw because I looked this up. Um, gelato hails back to Italy, tracing its beginnings during the early Renaissance. Gelato came before ice cream. And it's got more fat in it, too. That's, That's why cool. it's so much better. It Gelato really is just top tier, to be honest. Well, also, that was a fun... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, well, that was a fun little jaunt into the psychoticness that is Sarah's mind. Oh, yeah, because I'm telling you, constantly going. The brain, there are a million tabs open up here, and then I get lost down the rabbit holes. And so. she's going to start shutting them down and then turn into Mitch McConnell like the other day. Have you seen right. that? Did you see it? Have you seen all of the terrible but hilarious memes that are coming out of it? Of um, Mitch McConnell? Yeah, freezing in uh, the middle of a sentence for like I, 20 full seconds. Yeah, I've seen some of it and I'm like, uh, uh, uh. I'm just like, I can't believe this person makes any decisions for anyone, even himself. Right. It's insane. Um, But more things that I've been seeing on TikTok, because that's where I see most of the 
most of them um have you seen like all of these tiktoks about these men that go and see the barbie movie movie and they're like the man that bought the movie ticket to see barbie but the boy that want went to watch it and it's like all these like men that were like these queer men that are like i always wanted a barbie growing up so going being able to go see the barbie movie as an adult i'm excited about it and that's kind of i'm it's the little boy that's getting to live what he didn't get to live whenever he was little nice and i love i mean i'm i'm a billy eilish stan i love her music and her mm-hmm. new song um what what was i meant to or what was i meant for um it's a great song i love it i listened to it this morning um yeah what what was i made for by billy eilish and they talked about how they developed it and it was an interesting story so greta gerwig sent her people um a request to see if she would want to write a song for the Barbie movie. And she's like, I want the song to be Barbie's heart song. So she sent it off and she's, I I can't remember how long it was after like maybe five hours or something like that. She got a voice note that was just Billie Eilish singing that song. And she was like, that's it. That's an amazing song. And we want Billie Eilish to do it. Can we use it for the, can we use it for the Barbie movie? And it's an amazing song. I love it. If you haven't heard it, make sure you go listen to it. I'm sure if you use, you're you on TikTok or anything like that, you've probably heard it or at least a snippet of it. But it's a it's a great song and it has a lot of like, it has a lot of really good meaning. And when you watch the video, it's like her trying to play and make things perfect. And then the wind is blowing and then it's pouring down rain. And then she's just like gives up and then like puts everything away and then walks off. It's a really great I always love her music and her music videos. There's always like a weird, a weird meaning behind it that you can't really tell um, until you watch it a couple times. Right. Good music. Good music video. Um, I haven't seen the movie. I don't know if I'm going to. I might. I don't know. Might see if Ryan wants to, but I might. I kind of want to wait until it dies down so that there's not like it's not packed because I hate going to see movies with other people because I hate when people are rude and obnoxious and annoying. Um, And then like, so that's the good side of it. And then all these like toxic masculinity and brainwashed um, anti-feminist women that are like, we don't want to see the the Barbie movie. And it's like, I heard someone telling, like talking about it. And there's like a, an underpinning of you don't need like there's no need for a man and that's kind of like what the dialogue in the movie is about you don't need Mm -hmm. a man um and it's like i mean technically they're not wrong you shouldn't have to rely on anyone for anything right like why would you want to do that so i don't know it just seems like a bunch of toxic masculinity that's running rampant and women trying to some these the women that are talking against it are just like just trying to stroke these toxic masculinity their ego to make them feel better they're being um what we call pick me's so like you like know the, like the girls were like i'm not like other <laughs> girls and like i, I but unfortunately this. i used to be one of those girls yeah. who was like i'm not like other girls but <laughs> I saw this one video or this one picture and it was just like, these are the women that are boycotting Barbie. And it's just like a bunch of blonde, like tan or great, nice skin, blonde women. And it's like, they're boycotting Barbie. Really? Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. Um, it's I don't know. I just, how brainwashed some people are by the patriarchy. Right. Weird. Um, I will say Ryan went and watched Oppenheimer and I was like, I don't really, it doesn't seem like my type of movie. Um, but he went and watched it. He said it was amazing. Yeah, I saw his post. He was like, I just have to sit for a while and like digest it. <laughs> like, okay. You're like, all right, you do you. Meanwhile, I was having a freaking existential crisis at a, um, at a dealership, a car dealership. Oh, Yeah. So I, I have three things that I'm excited about. We'll start with the car thing first. Um, so I did I did end up getting a new car. I don't have it yet, but um, I did end up... I'm trading in my Explorer for a Ford Mustang Mach-E. Nice. So exciting. Um, but it was kind of a rail... Like a roller coaster, not a railroad. A roller coaster ride. So first, 
I they confirmed that I was still coming on Monday. Uh, Monday night, they they text me to confirm, and they were just like, "Oh, by the way, someone is coming to see it at eleven. So, do you want to move your time back, uh, just in case it sells, so that you don't drive all the way here and it's gone?" Right. I said, "Yeah, that's fine. We'll move it back to like one." So we moved it to one at like noon on Tuesday. I sent them a text message, and I was just like, "Hey, just checking on it. Is the car still there?" And they sent me a text message back. Oh, um, the people that were coming at 11 didn't end or they are running late and they're just now on their way here. Do you want to move yours back? And I was like, I can move it back, but that's going to be pretty late because I have to drive. And it was over an hour to drive to get there and then an hour to drive to get back. It was 64 miles away. So I had to drive there to get it, get there and then drive back. And I was like, so the latest I would need to know if it's still there would be 1.30. Uh, because it takes an hour to get there and I want to be there before 2.30 because I know if I do get the car or look into getting the car, it always takes forever for the finance BS and all that stuff. And there were other people there. So it's like, I know it's going to take a long time. So they text me around a little after one. They're like, the car is still here. They didn't buy it. So if you want to come, you can come whenever. So I headed up there around 2.00. Or headed up there around one and I got up there a little after two. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, went and got the car, took it for a drive. I had to sit in there for like 15 minutes waiting for someone to come and meet me. Um, but then they finally did. And I took it for a drive. He was like, I, I'm going to let you go on your own. I'm like, good, because I don't want you to be with me. <laughs> but he was like, I'm going to let you go on your own because I have someone else I'm helping right now. Um, so just feel free. And he like gave me a route and I was like, I don't need to listen to you. I will go whatever route I want. Although I did end up taking his route. Um, anyways, so I took it, uh, took it for a drive, test drove it. I loved it. I Well, I was kind of back and forth on it a little bit whenever I first drove it. The drive is fine. I just felt a little, a little cramped, but I'm also going from a Explorer, um, like a mid-size right. SUV, to this is a, a like a, a Mustang Mach-E. So it's like, it's a compact suv technically i think is what they consider it but it's more of a, a sedan mm-hmm. um just like a, a a taller sedan so i was like i think i'm okay i think i'm just gonna take my car and i'm not gonna end up purchasing that purchasing this and they were like well sit in it for a few minutes tell me what you think um and then like just give it a couple oh, a few minutes and just sit in it so i sat in it for a little bit and i was like you know what Let's see how much they're going to give me for my car. And then we'll go from there. So I talked to the the guy. Well, I, actually, he came in and sat sat in the car with me. I was like, that's unnecessary. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he sat in the car with me. And I was like, okay, so let's do this. We'll see what you'll give me for my car. And then we'll go from there. Um, so he was like, okay, well, let's go inside. And uh, you can have a seat. And I'll have one of my guys take a look at the car. Um, so they took a look at the car. They came back and he brought me like the paperwork that said, so here's what we're selling the car for. Here's what we're get- we're offering for your car. And they, I told him, I was like, I want at least this amount. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, this is what I'm, I would like to get as close to as we can. Um, and they came back and it was four, no, it was $3,500 less than the amount I had said. And I was like, mm-hmm. that's not. Well, no, it was actually $4,000 less than what I asked. And I was like, that's not really close enough to what I want for it to be appetizing for me. Right. So I was like, I think I'm okay. And he was like, okay, well, hold on. Let me go talk to my guy and like the um, sales manager or whatever. I was like, okay, whatever. That's fine. I'm just going to sit here um, and think about it a little bit more. And then he came back and he goes, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop the price of the car by $2,000. No. First, they were like, he said, well, let's, oh, he did say, um, let's drop the price a little bit of the car and we can look at that from there. I was like, okay. And then he showed me like what the payments would look like at that. And I was like, those payments are way more than what I want to pay. It was like over $100 a month more. And I was like, I don't want to pay that much more. Um, And I was like, I think I'm okay. I think I'm just going to take my car and go. And he goes, and I, I don't have my key at the time for with for my car. And he goes, well, 
hold on a minute. Let me go talk to my manager and see what we can do. And then he comes back with his manager and they sit down and they're like, so let's talk about this deal. Cause we don't, I mean, we don't want you to buy the car if you don't actually want it, but we would like to see what kind of a deal we could make. We could, we could get you. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. And he was talking about it. He was like, so this, and there was some like, um, something that they put on the car and they're like it's like thirteen hundred dollars we don't have to do that it's fine we can take that off and then he goes and this price we'll drop it we'll drop the price to what we said and then we'll give you two thousand more dollars for your car and i was like okay but what's the payment look like for that so they went and looked at the payment and i was like and it was like it was still around So the first time it was more like $200 more than what I wanted to pay. Now it was a little closer to $100 more than what I wanted to pay. I was like, that's not enough for me. I was like, I need it to be at this amount or as close to this amount as possible. And he goes, okay, let me see what else I can do. And they ended up working it to how it would make it to where it's right around the payment that I wanted. I was like, okay, if you can get me that, then that's fine. So they were working on it and then they took me back to finance and she was on the phone the woman that I was working with was on the phone and she goes okay and she was talking to someone and she goes and she said the payment and it was like $60 more than what I had said and then she hung up the phone she goes okay so here's what we got I was like you don't need to tell me I heard you if you can't get close enough to the payment that I said and what I agreed on with the salespeople. I don't need this deal. It's like, I have a car. It's good enough. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I can leave with my car. I don't need a new car. She goes, well, hold on. Sit there. Let me go talk to them and see. So <clears throat> all this happened. And then what ended up happening is she comes back. They dropped the sell price of the car by $4,000. And they gave me $2,000 above what they originally were asking, which they had already done that. And they're ending up over $1,000 red by selling me the car at the price that they sold it to me. And they got me to the the payment that I wanted. Dang. I was like, all right, we got a deal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now You're like, I got my way. I did. Yeah. And I usually do. It usually works that way. Yes, it does. So now I have a... 20, it's a 2021, so it's not brand new, but it only has 12,000 miles on it. Um, Ford Mustang Mach-E uh, in the color that I wanted. So it's it's kind of a like a dark gray blue. It's very hard to see the blue in pictures, but in person, it's very blue. Like you, it, you would say it's blue before you would say it was gray. Um, okay. And I've decided. So first, I was going to call it Old Blue. Ryan didn't like that, so I he said something about Vanessa, and I was like, I mean, maybe, because we always joke and call each other Vanessa all the time. Uh, right. I'd throw it back to Katya. Um, so I've I've changed it, so now I'm going to call it Moira for Moira Rose. Love that. <laughs> um, and I am supposed to be getting it on Wednesday or Thursday. And it's, again, so it's more of a mess, and I don't really understand why we're doing what we have to do. But apparently I have to meet him on Wednesday to do the VIN check at a um, police station because it's being sold in Massachusetts and being registered in Rhode Island. It has to have a VIN check done. Oh, yeah. It's like that in Indiana, too, if, yeah. you're, if the car is being purchased in another state. Yeah. So I have to do the VIN check with I don't understand why I have to be there to do the VIN check with them. I don't understand it. Um, it may have something to do with like the DMV laws in Rhode Island. No. And then I also, we also have to, I have to meet them at the BMV, DMV, DMV, um, on Thursday because they don't. So the Rhode Island's DMV is still, um, reservation only. And for next week, the only time they had reservations were on Thursday. And on Wednesday, um, or on Thursday, they don't, nowhere around here does uh, VIN checks on Thursday. They're always Monday through Wednesday. So they have to meet me Wednesday to do the VIN check and then meet me Thursday to do the registration and stuff. 
and I'm just like, can't you all just do this? Because I didn't have to meet them and do any of this for the Explorer when I bought the Explorer. So I don't understand why I'm having to do it now. But I'm like, whatever, that's fine. I hate that it's going to take over a week for me to get the car, but I'm fine with it. So after Thursday, hopefully, I mean, maybe Wednesday, if I can talk him into just giving me the car Wednesday so they're not driving 120 miles in my new car. Right two days in a row so i got a new car so that was one thing that's exciting um the other thing that's exciting is i got my final um assignment graded in my class and i ended my class with a 99.1 percent nice and i'm excited about that so i still have a (laughs) 4.0 And I I think I'm going to try and ride it through to finish my degree because I only have two classes left to finish my degree and end it with a 4.0, which is a big achievement for me because I've never like I've always had like a high 3.0 or three, but never, never finished anything with a a a 4.0. Right. So we'll see how it goes for the next two classes. If they're as I won't say easy because it's not really easy. It's just stuff that I already know. Um, then I think it'll be fine. Yeah. 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 And then the last thing, I mean, it's kind of, there's this one's twofold. It's annoying because I did kind of like the phone. Um, but I did get rid of the Motorola razor because it like the battery life was just horrendous. Like Mm. the last three days it's had to charge every single day. And it's brand new. Yeah, it's brand new. Yeah. And like that's what's the weird part. Like I take it off the charger in the morning and it literally just sits there and just drains the battery. And it's not even that it just drains the battery. I have it on like the battery saver mode. And it's still by almost noon, it needs to charge again. And it's just sitting there all day. So I'm like, I don't understand if I wanted to use this and actually do something with it, I would have to have a charger or a battery pack to do it's anything with constantly. it. Constantly. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just going to call AT&T and ask them what I can do to return it. Uh, the first guy, the first person I talked to was like, well, your it was delivered to you on July 9th. So you're actually technically, four, it's 14 days you have to return it uh, for a buyer's remorse return i was like okay well this isn't really buyer's remorse it's defective or it's junk and he goes well what i can do is i can send you over to the warranty department because it sounds like it might be just a battery issue i was like okay that's fine we'll try that and he sent me to a motorola warranty department but they said they don't like it was just an automated phone number and they were just like, well, we don't, they said, um, this, this option is not covered under this warranty department. Please check the, or make sure you're calling the right department. And I was like, why well, didn't call it? Someone sent it, sent me to it. Yeah. So then I hung up and I called them back and I got a lady and she goes, well, what we can do is if you want to exchange it for a different phone, that's an option. I was like, okay, but I don't know what phone I want. So she was like talking, she was like, well, I'm a Samsung person, so I'm kind of biased. And she was like walking me through all the Samsungs that they have. And I was like, is there no way that I can just return it? She was like, well, you know, iPhone. And I told her, I was like, my main, my main phone is an iPhone. She goes, well, you know, any day now they're going to drop the new iPhone. So why don't I look into if I can extend the um, buyer's remorse return for you and then you can just return it and then whenever they come out with a new phone or whatever because I don't want you to have to buy or settle for a phone that you don't really want so she talked to her boss or whoever to figure out if she could get the buyer's remorse extended Um, and she she came back and she's like okay so I went ahead and got that extended Um, thing one thing is you're going to have to pay a restocking fee which is $50 up to $55 And then um, because of the exception that we're making for it, um, you won't get reimbursed for your taxes that you paid for it. I was like, 
mm, okay that's kind of weird but whatever she goes well actually let me let me rephrase that you don't get your tax you may not get reimbursed like paid back for your taxes but they may give you a credit but we also will take whatever however much the restocking fee is away from whatever you paid for the your taxes so instead of refunding me the money um it get they put it as a bill credit for whatever i think it was like 70 dollars or something like that Mm -hmm. Uh, but they reduced that by the the 55 dollar restocking fee i was like okay that's fine whatever but i was like but what about the upgrade fee do i have to pay that since i'm not technically i haven't i didn't technically upgrade now she goes well yes you do So the only thing that will change is you're not going to be held liable. Like you won't have to pay for like the installment payments because you're returning the phone. So you did technically do an upgrade, even though you didn't keep it. I'm going to wait and then I'm just going to call and see if they can remove it for me. um, Right. Because they usually do what if I ask, because I've been with them since 2008. So they usually do what I ask them to do typically. Um, And it's, it's $36. I don't think it's going to kill them to remove it. And they usually do. But on the flip side of that, I, and I've been talking for the last 20 minutes. On the flip side of that, I called and talked to AT&T and I was like, I was kind of throwing around the idea of buying and getting a new phone. Or if I, so iPhones have this option, it's called an eSIM which is basically like a digital version of the physical SIM card, which isn't new because Verizon technically had the same thing where they would just like tie the phone to the bill and you couldn't just like swap your phones as easily. Um, But I was going to say, I think that's what I did with my phone was just swap the SIM in. Yeah. We just did smart switch and it, transferred everything over from the one phone to the other so it transferred everything but did you make sure you took your sim out of your phone and put it in the new one i don't think i have a sim you should most phones do so if you look around the outside of your phone there should be like a little circle or a little hole on the side of it somewhere Either the top. I feel like an old lady right now. Or on the side. It might be on the bottom too. And it looks like like a door kind of around or a cutout around it. It's kind of an oval. So that's where your SIM is. With the phone that I sent you, there should be a SIM ejector. (laughs) Like we're ITing on the bear with us, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) This was unintentional, but here we are. There's um a little metal sim ejector tool included in the package I sent. Oh my god. (laughs) And it feels wrong to push something into that hole, but that's the only way to... (laughs) Shut up, Sarah. That's the only (laughs) way to get the door to open. I just... I just... uh... Like when you push in on it, and you have to use quite a bit of force. You push in on it, and the door should pop out. And there's a like a there's a thing to do that with. Yeah, it should be on like a little card or on one of the papers, probably wrapped in the like the little paper portion. Probably. Like the pamphlets. The, the pamphlets. Oh, yep, there it is. There it is. I have like seventy of them. Because they give you one with every new phone. I don't have any yet, actually. This is the first one I have. Oh, dang. Look at that. Little thing for the sim. Yeah. And it should only fit in there one way. So you can't put it in wrong. So I shouldn't be able to fuck this up, is what you're saying. That's called Pokey Oak. Called what? Uh, pokey oak or um, error proofing and I'm hoping that your sim is the type of sim that you need for that because there's two different types of sims well, 
I can't see it. It looks like it's small enough. Is it teeny tiny? Yeah, it's small. Okay. I just... Ooh. Don't lose it. I feel like my whole life is gone. Because all you did was transfer your stuff. You didn't actually transfer your service. That SIM card is what transfers your service. Because that is what is tied to your bill. But anyways, oh, yeah. while, while she's messing around with that, um, so I called AT&T and I was like, is there any way where I can add another eSIM to my phone, my iPhone 14 Pro Max? And just use the same phone for two different numbers. And the guy was like, let me look. And he took like 10 minutes to look and he did some research and he goes, yes. All I need is to know the SIM number that's in your phone. And I go, okay. So I, I looked it up and I read it to him. And for some reason it wasn't working the first time. So I just restarted my phone um, and then tried it and it worked fine. So now I have one phone with two phone numbers. Nice. And I can text and call uh, from either phone number from one phone. Sarah looks confused. What? Are you whispering? Said you look confused. I'm always confused. But it's it's not... Um, it's having me set the time. On your new phone? Yes. Yeah. And it had me on Eastern time. And I was like, wait, I'm not in Eastern. But like, sounds, like, sounds like a you problem. It is a me problem. That is for sure. I'm just going to do that as is. Dun, 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 so while Sarah continues to figure that out, what we're going to do is do our turn of phrase for the week. Um, so this is our section where we talk about a phrase and then we learn what it means and then the origin or the assumed origin of the phrase. And today we're going to talk about barking up the wrong tree, which the meaning is to have misguided thoughts about an event or situation or a false lead. And the origin refers to hunting dogs that may have chased their prey up a tree the dogs bark, assuming they that the prey is still in the tree when the prey is no longer there. So barking up the wrong tree literally means barking up the wrong tree. Literally means barking yeah. up the wrong tree, which is fantastic. I mean, that's a lot more um, humble than what we talked about last week, which was uh, torture and um, torture. <laughs> This is true. Torture to stop people from talking. <laughs> Correct. Oh my goodness. Okay. And don't drop that phone because it is a little bit more expensive than the one that you had before. I like, I think, triple the price, if not more. And that's that's why it is going into the case right <laughs> now. I really like that case too. It's a really nice case, actually. And it was like fifteen dollars from Amazon. I bought one from Best Buy with it, but I didn't like it. So I found one on Amazon and it's really nice. It has a nice, a soft feel and the texture, the texture on the back. This is so weird. This is such a strange podcast today. It really is, but I'm, I'm here for it. The texture on the back is really nice. The texture on the back is really nice. I agree. The thing that took me the longest to get used to is the volume up and down button and the lock button being on the same side. Yeah, I think that's going to take a little time. And it was the same with the the uh, Motorola Razor. It was on the same side. But I think it was even switched. Like the power button was below the up and down button. Is that That's the way it is there too, isn't it? Yes. Okay. I can't, I can't remember my Wi-Fi password. Herpes. It is not herpes. Ugh, I'm gonna gonna have to text. Find out. Gross. I mean, that's one cool thing about iPhones. 
you basically it's a hot swap but you send everything even like your wi-fi settings and your text history and everything well sarah how's it going how are things you know how's work Work oh you got your tricycle did you get your tricycle put together yet i have not finished putting it together yet see sarah has exciting things going on there too i do i do um i did get a tricycle um it is not a motorized tricycle um, Does it have a basket? It has a basket. And it's it's really nice, actually. I um, I enjoy it. Um, as soon as I finish putting it together, I'm going to enjoy it even more. <laughs> <laughs> And then what else? What else do you have going on, Sarah? Well, um, I just got approved to live with this lovely couple um, and their dogs and cat. Um, They have a husky mix and a dachshund. Yikes. And the, the two loudest dogs. They were actually pretty quiet when I was there. They're very. Um, that's not typical, Sarah. That's not typical. I I know, I know. There's also a Shih Tzu in the house right now. Those uh, are also loud as fuck. Yes, Shih Tzus are loud. Shih Tzus are not meant to be. And like so, apartment dogs. Huskies are not like barking loud. They wail. Mm-hmm. And like vocalize. Um, they're very talkative but dachshunds are like they're bitches they bitch all the time (laughs) but it's like it's more of a robust bark than the dog actually looks but also it's not like a shih tzu bark that's like a yap it's a a full on bark Mm. so good luck with that Um, also Mm. with your allergy to dogs because huskies are not hypoallergenic at all no, they're if not. Anything, it's like one of the worst dogs to have to deal with when you have a not one of the worst, but a pretty bad dog to deal with whenever you have a allergy to dogs, dander. That dander. So it's it's kind of weird, but I'm less allergic to dogs now than I used to be. No. Yeah. I mean it's like rice. You're no longer allergic to rice. That's true. You do your um, body does build up an immunity at some point. Yeah, it either kills you or it undoes <laughs> the allergy. There, there's it, really it no. It either undoes you or the allergy. One of the yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, and you don't unfortunately get a choice in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's no middle ground there. Also, a husky in Texas is very like that's a strange place to have a husky. There's so many huskies here. It's... And there there shouldn't be because they're clo- cold ki- climate dogs. They should be in the cold. I I agree, but I'm just telling you. Unless it's a pomsky, which are freaking adorable. Pomskis are adorable. But um it's I'm I'm pretty excited though because like like I was telling you and Sam in the group chat, um I essentially get, you know, three rooms. No. And when you say three rooms, they're not three bedrooms. Right. So I think that's what Sam and I were a little confused about. It's like a living room and like a room, a bedroom, and then an office or a den or whatever. Right. Yeah. Like an office space. Yeah. That's Um, exciting. That they're not using. The house is lovely. I know. I saw it. Um, Well, not literally saw it but right right i'll have to take pictures of the backyard because the backyard is fantastic um there's like a little moat in the backyard that has no water in it right now obviously (laughs) well like i mean they haven't they haven't done anything with it and but it like used to be like a koi pond kind of thing 
And I was just like, man, I wish I could, like, I'm like, hmm, let me see how much money I can invest in water to dump in this. <laughs> oh, that's anyway. funny. Oh, and I took my shoes back that I bought. So the whole thing, last weekend, I was test driving another Ford, X, or Ford Mustang Mach-E. And it didn't work out because I didn't really like it. I didn't like the color. It also, um, I'm also a spoiled freaking brat, apparently, and have to have a power lift gate. Um, and it did not have one. And it kind of turned me off to the entire car. Uh, also, the color, it was like a, like a light blue silver. I wasn't really a huge fan of it. So um, I, instead of buying a $40,000 car last week, I bought a $100 pair of shoes. <laughs> that I now this week returned because <laughs> I mean I liked them but then when I put them on and I was going to wear them on Tuesday, Wednesday Tuesday or Wednesday I put them on and I was like I actually don't like these shoes so I, I was like, like just I, don't, kidding. <laughs> I don't need to spend a hundred dollars on a pair of shoes that I'm not going to like so I'm going to return them so that was me being fiscally responsible and then I went and spent not quite forty thousand dollars on a car but I, I am <laughs> close here we are but my the trade-off is i don't have to pay for gas i also don't have to pay for oil changes or transmission fluid changes or really the only thing that on an electric car that you have to keep track of there's a couple things uh tire rotations so like every fifteen thousand or twenty thousand miles you rotate your tires Every 15 to 20,000 miles, you get the, you can, you don't have to, get the cabin air filter changed. And anytime you run out of windshield washer fluid, you have to replenish it. And that's literally almost all you have to deal with on a electric powered car. Nice. And the woman at the dealership kept, kept saying, oh, it is electrical. It's an electrical car. I mean, it's, it's an electric car, but yes. <laughs> All cars have electrical, but this one is fully electric. Right. And it's funny. She was really nice. And she said she lives in Rhode Island, too. So she's like, I have a, a long drive every day, too. Well, at least you're not alone in that. That still sucks, though. Other than that, I got nothing going on other than I have a cold. Um, today, my back has been killing me all day. It feels all right right now, which is surprising. Except for when I tweak it a little bit. Um, but I've been kind of just taking it easy today. I worked a little. Well, I worked. I mean, I worked the regular amount. But then I also ran and did some errands. And other than that, I've been kind of taking it easy. Because my back's been bothering me. Like my sciatic nerve is. I feel like there's something swollen in my back that's pushing against it. Um, so it's just for like taking some ibuprofen. Um, well, it's. Advil with ibuprofen, so reduce the swelling. And then Brian had turmeric um, vitamins that he was like, that's supposed to help reduce swelling too. So we'll see if that works. Um, after we're done here, I'm going to go lay on my heating pad for a little while, like a 60 year old, and just watch TikTok or YouTube or something. I was going to say, after we're, after we're done here, I'm going to probably watch something on youtube mess around with the phones no um well enjoy that phone i hope it works out for you and i hope you like it yeah i'm sure i will i liked it the little bit that i had of it um and the cool thing about that phone and i think i told you this um it also wireless charges so like you can if someone's phone is someone you like your friend's phone is dead or their head you have airpods or something that are dying you can actually charge those things by laying like turning on the option and then laying them on the back of your phone nice so it acts as a wireless charger i mean it obviously takes the battery from your phone and moves right. it over to the other thing but right but like if it's enough to like if you have enough battery life to give your friend like enough of a charge to like get their phone going then you're yeah. good yeah yeah it's cool. Nice. I did like that phone, and I liked it a lot. And I didn't necessarily need to move to a new phone, but I wanted to play around with the Motorola Razor, which I now found out was a mistake. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Oh, well. That's fine. I just have, now I have one phone with two phone numbers, which is really cool. <laughs> that is actually, like, really interesting. Yeah, and it's cool because, like, at the very top where, like, most of the time you see... <laughs> the little um, antenna thing that shows you how much signal strength you have. Mine on this phone, it kind of looks like there is a reflection at the bottom of it because it shows both signal strengths. So it shows signal strength for both phones, for both phone numbers. Um, So it's like the regular one. And then at the very bottom, there's just four dots that kind of look like a reflection of the dots. It's nifty. And then I can switch back and forth who I'm, what number I'm texting with and what number I'm calling from. I love that. Will it save me any money on my phone bill? No. (laughs) But but I have it. And also the car, I can get a wireless or I can get a hotspot on it as well. I don't know how much. I think it's like $20 a month, though. So I don't know if it's going to it would be worth it. Mm. And I don't usually just sit in my car and then like my phone has its own hotspot. So I would usually just use that if I needed it. That makes I think sense. those are mainly for like if you have children that play with their iPads or tablets and they need um, wireless network. But I don't have children and it's not necessary. Because anytime I need to, I could just use my phone. There you go. Well, well, you ready to call it a podcast? I think we can call it a podcast. Do you have anything fun planned for the weekend other than playing around with your new phone? I do, actually. Are you going to go see Barbie? No, I'm not going to go see Barbie. I am going to go watch Jaws on the water. So... So you're going to be on the water watching Jaws. Correct. It's not going to be shining on the water. Got it. Correct. (laughs) But it's it's basically a drive-in movie, but we're all floating. That's cool. Are you floating on like a barge or like a on inner tubes? Oh, okay. So yeah, we're just we're just floating along on the inner tubes. That might be fun. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, also, um, I kind of was creeping on uh, Nick's Instagram, and Horace is not at all what I thought Horace was going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had sent you all pictures. Um, no, if you did, oh. I I didn't. It didn't click that that was Horace. Yes. Like here, I was picturing. So I've seen the picture of Nick, but I was picturing Horace. And I, I guess I never, you know, maybe you never mentioned that they were non-binary. Or if you did, I didn't hear it or I wasn't paying attention or it was in one of those things where you and Sam go for like 40 te- messages back and forth. And I'm just like, I'm not reading that or paying attention to any of it. <laughs> Summarize it for me if it's really that important. Um, I didn't realize that uh, Horace was non-binary and I was just sitting here picturing Horace as this like tiny little twink. So anytime you said Horace, I just pictured this tiny little twink and I, <laughs> and I, and then I looked at his Instagram or um, yeah, Nick's Instagram. And I was like, oh, that's not at all who I was picturing <laughs> whenever I was picturing Horace. So you should let them know that so they can get a quick giggle like you're getting. I'm going to, I'm going to message them. <laughs> but I just oh, saw it and I was like, wait, who's this person? And then they saw, like, they tagged, Nick tagged Horace, and I was like, oh, yep, not a, not a, not even close to what I thought that person looked like. <laughs> like, here in my mind, I was picturing this tiny little twink with, like, blonde, like, dirty blonde hair. And it's completely not that. <laughs> completely not that. <laughs> That's funny. Hilarious. Oh Hilarious. Well, I don't really have anything planned for this weekend other than um, laying around and relaxing. Because I don't have any schoolwork that's due because I have a week off. Um, So my next class doesn't start until next Wednesday. 
Um, and then we start back to class on the 21st. I know. I can't believe next week is August. That is insane to me. Right? Where has the time gone? It feels like last week was February. Right? Exactly. It's insane. Just, ugh, crazy. Insane. Well, I think that can be, that'll be it. Right. So please, um, oh, wait, there's part of this is missing. Hold on. Did I, you pull up the script? There we go. Scripted close. Well, part <laughs> of it is on one page and then for some reason it's on two pages. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. Leave me alone. I'm sick and I have back problems. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. It's on my thistle. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Now About That with James and Sarah. If you like this episode, please like, comment, follow, and subscribe. And please leave a review in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen, as this will help get the podcast out to more people and help us grow. Feel free to leave... Nope. (laughs) Feel free to follow us on social media. Our Instagram, Twitter, and now threads is at nowaboutthatpod. And if there's something specific you would like us to discuss on the podcast, feel free to email us at nowaboutthatpod at gmail.com. Visit our website, www.nowaboutthatproductions.com. Or you can give us a call or text and leave us a voicemail. Um, Our phone number is 765-557-4170. Again, thanks for listening. And we hope you have a great week since this will be coming out on a Monday. Sarah, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy Jaws. I will. I will. Jaws on the water. You know what else would be a good movie to watch on the water? Hmm. Crawl. You ever seen that? I have not. Do you know what it's about? I don't think I do. So it's the in the Florida Everglades. Not well, not in the Florida Everglades, but it's based in Florida, and it's um, a daughter and a like an older daughter. She's in her twenties, and her dad get caught in the house with like a massive alligators when um, it's flooding from a hurricane. So like a hurricane's coming and their house is flooded and they get trapped under the house with alligators. That's... It's interesting. That sounds interesting and I agree that should definitely be on the water. Um, It was... There were, I think it was not executed as well as it could be, but it was, it was still not a terrible movie. I would watch it again. Well, I mean, hey, as long as you would watch it again. Yeah. All right. Well, we will let you all enjoy the rest of your Monday. (laughs) And we will talk to you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.